Number one, Tim, the Buell Super Cruiser. And I'm going to say that anyone listening to this on audio, this might be a good episode for which to go over to the Full Tank Motorcycle Podcast YouTube channel because we'll lay some pictures over the video of these bikes. So definitely check that out if you've not subscribed already. But this looks absolutely bonkers. Have you got it on your screen I now, have, Tim? Yeah, I have got it on my screen. Have you seen this already or not? No, this is fresh to me. <laughs> I did hear, actually, I haven't really kept uh, track of Buell, but someone did mention the other day that they were releasing new bikes. Is this just one of a few that they're releasing? This is more of a uh, concept prototype, but they are taking orders. And that bloke in the picture I've sent to you is yeah. um, Roland Familiar. Sands. Indeed. Yes. Yeah, that's why, I mean, in the photo, you sort of think... Yeah, I guess. Has, has he had a hand in designing this, do you know? This is a collaboration between right. Buell and Roland Sands to make a power cruiser, I guess you could call it. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. Do you want me to tell you a bit about it? Yeah, please do. Go ahead. So I think the the concept is to make something that actually will go quickly and handle well, but mm. retain that sort of chilled out, laid back cruiser vibe. And I think mm. there's been attempts by like Harley to make more performance orientated bikes, but they're still very sure. much limited by the constraints of, you know, that brand and their style of bikes and mm. perhaps what development is available to them. They sort of tend to put better forks or um, a bit more power or, better brakes, twin discs yeah. on existing bikes. But this is a ground up, like wholehearted attempt to take the, the cruiser riding position and mm. some of the style and just turn it into something quite mad. And actually the specs sort of compete. In fact, they look really impressive next to even things like, I'd say the Ducati Diavel V4. I was going to say that's probably the closest, you know, rival, I suppose, in terms of a performance cruiser, if you want to have that as a, you know a bracket it's got to be the benchmark i mean we talk yeah, about the you got the big harley breakout or whatever you mm. know big muscle harleys like that but they're very torque focused and also still quite heavy we've got the rocket three we always say we love that bike but that's massive as well so yeah really in terms of like lightweight cruisers there's only the diavel and this well take a stab at the peak power figures it's a big um buell b-twin i'd always deri derive from but okay have they, have, do they list the actual horsepower? Because I know sometimes on Harley, they just mention the talk and they just leave it I, there. I like, think that's a little bit of like horsepower shame. <laughs> they didn't yeah. list it because yeah. it ain't so good. <laughs> but this one is quite good. So they're okay. more, I would call Buell horsepower impressive brazen. Impressive figures for me. Impressive figures for me in horsepower, which is ridiculous. But I would say anything that north of 160 break and i don't know what the rocket Close. is off the top of my head i need some other sort of um rockets like 162 and but that okay. bias is a little bit to, more towards torque the torque yeah yeah it's 221 okay. newton meters of peak torque which is i'm gonna ask most. 160 horsepower of this thing what's it got 175 nice good then i'm satisfied <laughs> that is not a bike that looks like you know visually that's not a 175 horsepower looking bike is it no, that looks like it's going to be a sluggish cruiser type what's thing. the uh what is the power plant on that one then did you say that's buell derived is it their own mm, i don't someone can probably tell us in the comments of the video mm. more about this but it's a liquid cooled v-twin as you can see i think it's 72 yeah. degrees mm. the sort of interval between those cylinders um and it just calls it the buell summing summing engine okay but i know they used to use harleys right but this is called the let me let me tell you what exactly what it's called mm -hmm. it is called the buell et phone home <laughs> the buell et v2 v twin does it come with a little basket on the front so you can put your little partner in there <laughs> It's yeah. <laughs> no, it's actually uh, it's just got a little ET inside spinning the crank round. <laughs> okay. No, it's I, I'm reading this off a off a motorcycle website okay. that sort of does news and stuff, and they've said it's the Buell ET V2 V twin, which the V twin seems unnecessary considering V 2s in the name. But yeah, mm. ET V two, the ET phone home. <laughs> Yeah, it's liquid cooled. It revs up. That's mm. probably where most of the sort of big cruisers don't really compete. It's like mm -hmm. they're all focused on that sort of 3000 RPM peak torque. And then obviously, uh, we'll get onto this more actually in a minute, but, um, horsepower is a product of like 
um, torque and revs, isn't it? So if, yes. if you multiply torque and revs at a certain point, you'll get pretty much the horsepower and they never get the revs to, to get that peak power. But this looks like it's going to rev up. They've not been particularly yeah. forthcoming with the specs because it's still a prototype. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, it still looks pretty punchy. The other thing is weight. Like all the cruisers are 300 kilos plus apart from the mm. Diablo, which is like 220, 230 or something. Mm -hmm. This... And this is like a prototype. So like, look at that exhaust. It's not, that's not going to fly, is it, with, <laughs> no. you know, Euro 5. <laughs> no. um, so if, once you put a cat on it and stuff like that, mm. or whatever, you know, the homologation necessities, yes. it's going to weigh a little bit more, but still 204 kilograms. They don't say whether that's dry or wet, but 204 kilos. That's insane for a cruiser of that size. It is. I mean, you've got to look at it and say there's not much to it, is there? Like they've really gone bare bones with the sort of finish and... Yeah, granted, definitely, but uh, well, yeah, impressive. Still like, impressive. Definitely, an imp yeah, impressive figures. Let definitely. me give you some other impressive. Well, they're not. This is more like the hardware. So, the other thing, they, the the other side of it is that they've tried to make it handle. So you can see the pegs are quite mm. high on it. Um, yes. So they've got decent ground clearance. Mm -hmm. They've got seventeen-inch wheels front and rear. Yeah. So they tried okay. to make it a bit more. Uh, it does kind of maybe detract from the looks a little bit to me yeah i was gonna say a bigger wheel on the front would have been i get it for handling you want the 17s but it's not traditionally goes with that look does it no would you say as well that that rear wheel looks a bit um a little in that quite large rear mug guard yeah i mean i don't want to comment on somebody's uh design aesthetic but i don't think i'd have paired that rear section with the rest of the bike some of it looks a little bit uh cobbled together it is a prototype we've got to yeah. say but yeah i know what you're saying it does look like a prototype mm. um i wonder if a little bit of that though is like for rear wheel travel because it's got a proper swing arm and monoshock like a horizontal mm. mounted yes. monoshock a la kawasaki or whatever that's going to make it ride better of course and you want more travel on the rear which obviously you wouldn't normally have on a on a cruiser as much oh um, mate yeah. mate honestly cruisers are some like what is it the indian scout <laughs> yeah normally you get like what let's say 120 mil of travel minimum mm, mm -hmm. up to i don't know what would you say like 150 is all right and then our venture bikes mm. go above that yeah the the indian scout for example and this is the same with the sports the rest harley sports the rest indian scout 76 millimeters sports the <laughs> s specs let's have a quick look at this no oh, it doesn't say on the spec sheet that's another example <laughs> of a manufacturer being a yeah, little yeah, bit yeah. shy. But honestly, going over some serious bumps on those style of bikes. So while I am complaining about that sort of um, big gap between the rear mm. wheel and the sort of top of the rear mug guard there, mm. like, I probably would really appreciate it when all my weight's on that. Yeah, you can't. It's a tough one, isn't it? If you're talking about having a performance cruiser, then unfortunately you are going to sacrifice a little bit of the looks. But then that makes it more functional and um, less posery, I suppose, but still something you can definitely pose. This on. is, you know, every motorcycle is a trade-off, mate. There's no, yeah, definitely. like it, often in the comments, people will be like, this bike would be better if it had this. And it's like, yeah, but there's a trade-off. It would, ha it, it'd be, you know, less good looking or it'd be mm. more expensive or yes. it'd be heavier or, yeah. you know, all those kinds of things. And this is definitely compromised looks wise, but yeah, it's definitely leaned into the performance. The other thing with the wheels yeah. is like the front and rear wheels don't quite match, do they? But again, it's uh, prototype. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Does that look good? I think is that maybe also the other thing I've spotted on there, which instantly, if I saw it, would go. Even if it didn't have the Buell name on it, I'd be like, huh, I wonder what the base is for this because it's got that big front disc on it as well. Yeah, mounted to the sort of rim. Yeah, iconic with the um, with Buells. It's a single disc, but yeah, that is mm. an absolute beast. And, mm. and the sort of diameter, of course, of a, a, a disc can give it more um, leverage, I suppose, and therefore yeah. more power. Uh, it does look so cool as well. That is one mm. of my favorite design features of, of Buell's. And I think the caliper on it, it's got a lot of parts, basically. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to say six. I think it's six, but I think it's six. I could be making that up. But it might be more. You never know. One, two, three. Yeah, I think it's six, but it could be more than that. Might be eight. Because mm. look, I can see four holes on it. Uh, four holes on one side, yeah. So I was thinking maybe eight. But I remember hearing something about them having six on the old. Uh, pegs, okay. Either way, that's some, that's some good stuff. That's a lot of putts. I, I really like the, the look of that because no one else does that. So 
it really does call something out as being from Buell. Lighter as well, I'd assume, because there's no sort of carrier for the disc. I like it. I mean, they were always innovative. I don't know if you, how familiar you are with Buell, but my dad absolutely loves them. Uh, so I've heard, you know, about how they started and uh, some of the stuff that made them a bit more interesting, like having the oil in the frame and stuff like that, which gave it sort of better balance, I think it was. Yeah, one, one of the bikes has fuel in the frame and oil in the swing arm or something. Madness. Maybe that was what it was. Yeah, but it's like in <laughs> in the other parts of the bike, we are like, oh yeah, it's just wasted space, I guess, on other bikes. I'd yeah. like if it was full of liquid refreshment. Do you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Yeah, but then you'd have to keep topping it up and it'd probably taste a bit manky. It'd get warm. <laughs> so it'd have to be coffee or mold wine no mold no. wine <laughs> just mold apple juice <laughs> <laughs> um anyway let's move on it's got dunlop tires super sticky mm. looking upside down fork you know it's got that uh horizontal backlink shock yeah the buell style brakes were mentioned sc project exhaust as well that looks like it's going to be very noisy yeah. i don't know if you've picked up on this <laughs> But it's also got a gold chain, which, as we all know, I have to say it every time, is worth another 10 to 15 horsepower. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Now, leave a quiet bit for someone to say, what is he talking about? Do you remember I told you about this? I said no. that in one of my YouTube videos once, and but it's just a joke. It's not a very good one. But someone commented saying, I don't really understand why a gold chain adds 10 horsepower. Oh. It's just like no. people say that, don't they? Like, oh, red cars are faster or whatever. Yeah, no, exactly. It's just he didn't read the sarcasm. I'm going to try and deliver stuff like that as um, earnestly as possible. Do you know what I mean? To try and throw people <laughs> off. Yeah. I'm going to keep doing it. Uh, <laughs> anyway, the only downside of this bike. Wait, is this the only downside? It looks a kind of unusual, I suppose. Um but performance-wise, it sounds like it'll be incredible. It'll be certainly an experience to ride. But yeah. one of the downsides of this bike, and possibly an upside, is that they haven't announced the price. And I, I assume it's going to be astronomical, let's say. Yeah, I was going to say, I'll probably put it in the bracket with the other bike that's uh, you know, allegedly a performance cruiser, uh, which would be the Arch um, lineup. One of oh, their yeah, we forgot to talk about those. We, we mentioned them in a recent podcast, right? We did, yeah. It was one of my picks for... Um, like just if we were choosing uh you know dream bike a dream cruiser yeah and it's what's that like seventy thousand or something like is it so i think it was it was high <laughs> ah. if it's not it's yeah not far off um if you think of like high-end bikes from most manufacturers or from main manufacturers well they're going up to like 25 ish if you got yeah. really top spec so you know minimum 40 upwards i'd say for something like that surely You'd expect so, but mm. I do have some pleasant and positive news for you. Go on. The, in, in order to secure one, you only need a deposit of $50. And, double good news, it's refundable. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Screw it. I'll, <laughs> yeah, I'll put my uh, £50 in for that. At what point does a deposit become so insignificant that it's meaningless? And, like, let's say Buell... <laughs> It's $50 yeah. and it's refundable. Like, let's yeah. say they get a thousand orders for these, like, let's say they're a hundred thousand dollars, these crazy super cruisers. Uh -huh. And they make, what did I say? How many orders did I say? Let's say a hundred people, hundred okay, people yeah. put $50 mm -hmm. deposit on mm. hundred thousand pound bikes. So they're expecting to sell like 10 million. Is that right? Mm. And then everyone just says, actually, I'm good. I'll take my, yeah. Or oh, I only thought it was going to be like 15. Um, yeah no i don't think that'll happen i think maybe it's 50 dollars to sort of register your interest now maybe they'll have a little word and say look we're gonna actually build it now are you still in and then you yeah. have to confirm it but still yeah that's a, it's an odd one though because yeah i don't mind depending on what they end eventually then come up with as a price you you could <laughs> you're gonna lose a lot of those 50 dollars shall we set up a gofundme on the full tank motorcycle podcast group where we all put a dollar in each <laughs> and then put a deposit we can all share this, yeah. <laughs> Time share. I mean, the problem is you have to then pay for it, but just to have the deposit on would be excellent. Just be a real, a real moment in my life. Anyway, <laughs> that is the Buell Super Cruiser. What do you think of that? First impressions. You don't have to say which one you're going to choose yet because we're going to go through the rest of the bikes, so you can tell me at the end. But first impressions of that one. I like it. Is it your cup of tea? Um, is it my cup of tea? Probably not. It wouldn't be the one I would... Um 
personally buy because it doesn't look like my kind of bike. Because, like I say, if you're going to get a cruiser, just get a cruiser. If I'm going to get a bike that performs, I you know I'm, I don't mind how that looks. There's loads of well-performing bikes that don't look like cruisers. It's a Swiss Army knife, though, mate. But what I would say is I am, you know, I, that was a nice name to see pop up today when you're saying you're uh, there's a few odd, you know, quirky bikes that you're showing me. Have you seen Definitely, the adventure bike they announced? I've got, to, I've got to show you this. Hang on. Yeah, they are putting out some other new bikes at the moment. The, the Super Cruiser looks kind of interesting. This is called the Super Touring. That I is probably one. one of the most confusing looking bikes. I've yeah, I, do, I don't know what i make of that <laughs> the, the metal hard cases that are sort of body matched and yeah, then the yeah. front headlights i don't know I'm, I'm sure it's wild to ride but crikey that's the thing is they were always really good and then i think it's the xb9 and xb12 so the ones where the, the naked looking ones back in back in the day not that they long. were quite cool weren't they? But they they're really cool looking and that is a bike i would consider having um and they're tiny as well actually when you see them up close so super agile but then they also had the is it the lightning whatever they're called yeah. the other ones and they weren't uh, mm, they weren't lookers in my opinion so they have it's a, a mixed history bag. of kind of like a mixed bag of like some that are very pretty and quirky looking and some that are just like pig ugly but oh bless it it's endearing in some way but they also perform and it really is the performance at the end of the day isn't it doesn't matter what it looks like when you sat on it i'd still so. say it's a ballsy move to put those aluminium <laughs> adventure bike <laughs> cases just get some like more rounded givey black <laughs> cases yeah. generic stick those on um, yeah. but i have noticed here mate it does have those wheels that they've put on the super cruiser so maybe those are a standard feature that sort mm. of aren't quite matching anyway you said not you direct cup of tea but you appreciate the sort of ingenuity and engineering ambition yeah i like seeing something new i like seeing people try different things that's the great thing about you tim you're very open-minded <laughs> right 